Hello everyone, Deanna here, and thanks so much for being here. So today's video, I'm going to be reviewing Pretty Dead Queens by Alexa Dunn. So this one I did not write my own summary for as I find that the one that's actually in the dust jacket is very concise and it's well done and I think it summarized it in a nice way that I didn't want to redo it. So I'm gonna go ahead and read that out right now. A new reign begins. After the death of her mom, screw cancer. 17 year old Cecilia Ellis goes to live with her estranged grandmother a celebrated author whose Victorian mansion is as creepy as the murder mysteries she writes. On the surface, life is utterly ordinary in the California coastal town, until the homecoming queen is murdered. And she's not Seaview's first pretty dead queen. With a copycat killer on the loose, Cecilia throws herself into the investigation, determined to crack the case like the heroines in her grandmother's books. But the more Cecilia digs into this town's secrets, the more she worries that her own mystery might not have a storybook ending. So this one I didn't originally have on my TBR for October because I did kind of forget that it was coming out in October. I did mention earlier in the year that it was on one of my anticipated reads for the fall, but I do not track that stuff as well. I'm pretty bad at remembering exactly when books come out and things like that. I just, I don't, I don't follow that. I'm just not as interested in that. I did just notice because I do follow this author on YouTube. I believe I also follow her on Twitter um, because Alexa Dunn is someone who has a YouTube personality here. I, I've even referenced her in this in previous videos before on this channel. She is someone who does give writing tips and things like that, so I follow her a lot for that reason as well. And I just find her videos very informative, very interesting. She has a great personality on camera, and I love some of the behind the scenes that she provides as she kind of is in like the marketing world and the entertainment world in a way. And uh, I just love that she is following her dreams as an author. And so I did know about this book. I did know it was coming out. But again, I kind of forgot that it was the date that it was. So I didn't have it on my TBR and then realized, oh, <laughs> I saw some promotion for it. I was like, oh, I need to grab it. So I snatched it right up because I did want to give it a read. I did read. Alexa's other book, The Ivies, as well as I have read her, one of her debut novels, which was Brightly Burning. So I do have a little bit of Alexa's works in my reading repertoire. And so I wanted to go ahead and give this one a read as well. Uh, this one is very much your YA type book. Uh, it follows a first person reader with following our main character Cecilia as she comes to the town of Seaview to live with her grandmother after her mother's death. So this one is very much steeped in grief. It is very centered around dealing with grief and you can feel a lot of that element throughout this book. I think that Alexa definitely used this as a way to find solace for herself as she was writing this and I think that's wonderful when we are able to use our hobbies and our our works and our creative ventures especially if she's gonna get paid for it that's amazing but I love that we're able to use our creative outlets to process things like grief and things like that that we deal with so I could very much feel that coming off the pages and just how much death is very much centered like we literally open the first page and it's like some people attract death so death is very much heavily throughout this book not even just because it is a murder mystery but just because of like the grief that people are dealing with the characters are dealing with and things like that so we definitely see that in this book I did make a reading journal entry as well. So I did a post for this one. I did uh, some pages here 
for Pretty Dead Queens. I'm not as happy with it as I have been with some of my previous journal entries, to be very frank and honest. Um, I do feel like perhaps maybe I just rushed it a bit to just kind of get it down on the paper. Uh, I feel like maybe I just don't have as much to like really tie it to the book as much. A lot of times I try to make it very much fit with the theme of the book. Um, and this one, I don't know, I just kind of use some like the pinks and stuff kind of to match like a bit of the pinks in the cover and like the black with the the white writing and then I kind of was thinking of like the jail because there's just a bit of like some of what happened to the previous queen is mentioned and you know um, I just kind of had that feeling but it's maybe not as, as just it's just not as tied in as I would have loved but you know what you win some you lose some and that's how it goes but uh, I did find that this one was very quick writing style very reminiscent to some of Alexa's other writing styles and that she does write uh, a very like her writing style is very YA like in that it's very quick it's very kind of like easier to read very you know geared towards more of a younger gener um, younger audience sometimes like your you know teens to early adults so I, I see that throughout the writing um, there was also you know there were times throughout this because we are dealing with like a murder mystery and what's going on with this murder there were times that I was wondering who was it? Could it be this person? Could it be this one? She is pretty good at, because I found this with the Ivies too, at sometimes making you wonder who exactly it is. But then there were points too when it was kind of obvious as well. Um, and there were, you know, times when it was like, no, this is probably who it is. And it was almost kind of exasperating in a way to be like, okay, it's that person. Um, and then there were some scenes that made me kind of question, like, would this actually happen? Would this kind of really be where this person puts themselves in this scenario? There were times when Cecilia was, like, just annoying and frustrating with how she was kind of doing certain things. Like, she leaves her cell phone at one point and it's like, oh, I can't go get it because that'll be weird. No, it's not. Not for teenagers. Um teenagers literally have their cell phones practically glued to their hands sometimes and when they're like oops I forgot my cell phone it's like that's a normal thing to like just be like oh I want to grab my cell phone like no matter what so um it was just kind of like hmm yeah that's teenagers you know I think sometimes it is hard to write teenage characters when you're not really in their minds because sometimes especially with the way the you know, teenagers have grown up with technology so it is something that they are pretty familiar with and they uh, there's so many of them that have that experience with technology and just how they speak and what they do and things like that um, sometimes it can come off across that this these characters aren't quite teenagers but then again sometimes that might just be well we're, maybe we're not giving enough credit to teenagers where teenagers should get credit teenagers are incredibly smart resilient and you know resourceful and have the ability to be very adaptable so Sometimes it's not fair just to be like, well, that's not exactly how a teenager would act when each teenager is unique. And sometimes that's the comments that I saw a little bit of why I'm going on this rant is I saw some comments on some of the reviews of like, well, the, the teenagers weren't believable. And in some ways I could see it because I do have teenagers around me. I have teenage girls that uh, <laughs> growing up and I did see a bit of that but at the same time I also see that it's not fair to judge them either and just think that well this is exactly how teenagers act because teenagers are each unique and different so I just kind of want to put that out there that maybe sometimes that's not fair criticism when writing a book when it's not always so 
a black and white. <laughs> but uh, this overall, what I will say is I did enjoy the read. There were times when that very critiquing brain of mine and like that you know, hopeful writer brain of mine where I'm always kind of picking things apart to be like, okay, well, what about this? And how how should this be written? And, and looking at the way that scenes are written, sometimes that came through a little too much and I was sometimes going like, oh, is that really how it would go? Or what would I do if I was writing this? So sometimes I have to put that aside and just think as a reader, how much am I just enjoying this? Like readers, sometimes we know that books are going to have certain elements that little beats that are going to be hit you're gonna to have to have certain things in a book to make it an enjoyable book and to fit a certain genre and to have certain elements within it so sometimes we can be a little too harsh when we are critiquing because sometimes it's just meant to be just a fun read it's just supposed to be a good time and a fun time and a way to escape a bit and just have a bit of fun so I do think that overall this book really did do that is that it just gave me a nice escape for a few days it had me wondering who it was I do enjoy Alexa's writing style I do I, I like the the way like the writing is it's something that it's not super heavy, not too prose heavy or anything, but it's also not something where I'm, you know, bored with it or anything like that or thinking it's too juvenile. It's kind of, to me, I like it. I enjoy the writing style, so if maybe you enjoy some of Alexa's previous writing styles, then you will enjoy this one as well. And I just, I love this cover too. I think it's so pretty. I still look at this person right here and constantly think of Hilary Duff though, or like Lizzie McGuire. It literally, to me, I, I don't know. <laughs> she just looks like Hilary Duff or Lizzie McGuire to me. <laughs> it just screams that <laughs> to me. And I just found that funny. And I love <laughs> Lizzie McGuire and <laughs> I love Hilary Duff. So it's just like I have her there on my book but I did overall enjoy this book I found it really quick it was nice to just kind of like get that in quickly for an October read because you know October is time for maybe those spooky kind of murder mysteries and things like that it's the season for it so I think it came out at perfect time to get that October fix for your murder mysteries uh, the, the YA of it like she does say in here she wants to be a bit like murder she wrote and she does I think even um, reference in the back Angela Lansbury rest in peace she does give like a little shout out to her in the back as like being influenced by murder she wrote uh, I enjoyed murder she wrote as well growing up of course this didn't entirely hit murder she wrote for me but that's also because Murder, She Wrote is a lot more adult. I mean, we literally got Angela Lansbury as an older lady going around and like solving mysteries. This was more a teenager bumbling around, uh, a teenager who's dealing with her own mother's death and now is moving to her grandmother, new situation. And so she's throwing herself almost into this because she's looking to almost escape that in a way and deal with that and it wasn't quite as murder she wrote I find but that's my opinion um just because again murder she wrote was just a one you know a very it would be hard I think to make it a YA in a way that this was I think it's very wonderful that Alexa was influenced by Angela Lansbury and the Murder, She Wrote series and I could see where maybe she was trying to make the grandmother a bit like that uh, though the grandmother I had mixed feelings about um, because yeah she's pretty much seen as like the hero in this town because she's this big famous rich 
writer who brings a lot of tourism to their town and she's got a lot of influence and a lot of money and stuff. So I had like mixed feelings about Mora because I could kind of see her being a bit of the murder she wrote lady but then not because I think she was almost a little too hip grandma when I don't think that's really who Angela Lansbury was. I don't know if anyone would say Angela Lansbury as a character was a, a hip grandma. I don't know. But, <laughs> uh, but anyways, that is something entirely else. I just found that kind of interesting that we do have it as like, it was like a murder she wrote, but I didn't really get that as much when I was reading it because I think Cecilia just didn't come off as a great murder. I, I find sometimes I was like again why is Cecilia even chasing this down like what is she what's really in it for her as much other than trying to deal with her mother's grief like she's brand new to this town she barely knows these people she is chasing down this murder mystery and it's she's putting herself in situations where she's like getting herself in trouble and things like that i found yes her being tied to that her grandmother is a writer that's interesting but she doesn't really go it from it from that approach too much i think if maybe it was more leaned into in that she was more interested in the murder mysteries but she'd only read like one of her grandmother's books she never even read her grandmother's books so i found there was like a disconnect there because maybe if like maybe she was really into her grandmother maybe if she like secretly idolized her grandmother because you know of things that happened and the fact that she didn't really know her grandmother that well and so she like really wanted to know her and this is her way to like prove to her grandmother that hey grandma i can like solve this mystery and that but there wasn't that. She had like this, like I said, a strange relationship with their grandmother. So she didn't really know her grandmother. And her grandmother was Miss Hip and Cool Mora instead of being like grandma. That there was like this like disconnect in that why would she be so invested in solving this? I mean, I don't know. That's kind of sometimes the issue sometimes with some murder mysteries that fine line of how much are these characters going to get into it because clearly when you're writing a murder mystery you need your character to go and figure it out and find it and things like that but this one there was it took so long to get into the murder because we were like building up a bit of the backstory a bit but I think sometimes we got a little lost in that and then when the murder happened it was then so quick paced after that which obviously yes things would happen very quickly after a murder but again there was a bit of like a disconnect in some ways and there was almost too many things being thrown at the wall sometimes and there was just things that it's like well why would this happen or why would this person do this and some of the motives were a little off or we were we were trying to tell two stories simultaneously and that in a way sometimes just wasn't as clear yeah there there was just a lot that i didn't really understand of what was going on now that i'm like stepping back and kind of rethinking the book and what's happening um, there was just some times when it was kind of like, what? why did this happen? What was the motives here? That's where sometimes I was kind of like, mm, here and there on this one. Um, overall though, I did give it four stars because it did get me reading it. It kept me engaged. It kept me wondering what was going on. Uh, I do like her writing style. I do like the way like of reading how swept up I do get into it and how easily digestible it is. I think there are some flaws though. Like I said, there's just sometimes in the way of like murder mysteries where sometimes it doesn't feel as satisfying when certain things are going on. I felt that with the maidens. I felt, I mean, maybe sometimes, maybe murder mysteries just aren't really my genre, my favorite one to read because maybe I'm just too. <laughs> like 
what? <laughs> too critical? <laughs> too much thinking of what's happening behind the scenes and not able to just sit back and enjoy it sometimes? But that's just what I'm kind of wondering is how much do I actually enjoy murder mysteries? <laughs> Because <laughs> sometimes they're they're not as enjoyable to me, but <laughs> overall though, I did give it four stars um, Just because I did find it very fun and and an entertaining read. It was very entertaining since I gave bad monkey four stars It's kind of along that like it's almost leaning a little more towards three stars for the actual murder mystery elements But like some of the other stuff was fun to read interesting I liked a little bit of like some of the backstory I almost wish I had a little bit more from the characters because they did enjoy some of the characters like Bronte and like Amber, I would love to see like a little bit more of them and their relationship and a bit more of like some of the other characters behind the scenes, a little more of like Mora too and kind of what drove her and what compelled her and her character a bit too. Cause then maybe it would have really helped us to understand a lot of what was going on and a lot of reasons behind a lot of things. So I would have just loved to see that as well, but I will give it four stars though again it is leaning more towards a three star but it's really averaged out because I gave it mainly four stars for most of its stuff so all right I think that is it for me though for pretty dead queens um I enjoyed it and had some fun reading it so I hope you do too if you read it I hope you have a good time and if you have read it, let me know below. I'd love to know your thoughts. If you're thinking about reading it, then also go ahead and give me your thoughts. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. This video a like if you enjoyed. I appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, night, evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Thank you so much for being here. Take care of yourselves, and you will see me next time. Bye!